Hey there, Connected Life, it's Dr. Steve, and today we are going to speak about when kids get conditions, um, anxieties, or problems with the child in the family home. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a good one. So I consulted with a mom the other day and she was bringing her child in for some situations that were going on with her young child who was, I believe, six, six years old, six years of age, and a young girl. And so she came in with some scoliosis and some curvature of the spine. And uh, so anyways, I wanted to give you an idea of a couple th dynamics that happen in the family, in the home, um, when there are, let's just hypothetically say there's a mother or father or male, female, or a, a two authority figures in the home and one child. Um, now, Dr. Bowen, who's done a ton on family dynamics, uh, you know, um, talks about triangles uh, in the home. So that's what, this is the most basic triangle in the family dynamic. And so uh, triangles in the family have um, basic levels of anxiety. So no family is void of anxiety. There are fundamental uh, layers um, or kind of you could think of it like a, like a phone, like a bandwidth of anxiety. Uh, the more dysfunctional the family, uh, even from, from ages back, so this is where kind of some lineage carries forward, but the more dysfunctional the family, the more baseline anxiety there exists. Uh, the more highly functional and independent the family is, the less anxiety uh, as a baseline in the family, although no family really is void of anxieties because it's just part of the human condition. Condition. So uh, what he states and talks about a little bit more is about when there's a situation uh, either happening in mom, within mom, an anxiety's rising, um, in dad, anxiety's rising, or between mom and dad uh, as more friction and resistance between the two. So as it arises and gets bigger within the, uh, the, the core authorities in, in the home, uh, oftentimes if that doesn't resolve, what ends up happening, it gets projected to the child. So it literally like the triangle goes shoo, down towards the child and the child actually starts taking the attention. Now, it's kind of like a deflect mechanism of the mom and dad to deflect it to see now, instead of looking within, they're seeing their behavior change, anxiety, symptom expression, could be gastrointestinal stuff, it could be uh, pain, it could be uh, tension, it could be uh, like actual anxiety, it could be depression, it doesn't really matter or the what it is, it's the matter that the attention is being driven to the child. So I want you to first know that when something's going on with the child, and I wrote this in my book, kind of finding magic in the mess to parents is like, we want to check in with ourselves first, because oftentimes when we're seeing something within our child, maybe it's ADD or ADHD or something of that nature, it's important for the parents to check in with themselves first, because unresolved, unriddled anxiety up top is going to be projecting a behavior change or promoting a behavior change within the child. And that behavior change could be kind of a mental, emotional, it could be on the physical realm. It just depends on how that child is embodying that degree of tension. If it happens for long, then oftentimes the symptoms become more chronic and there's chronic illness uh, oftentimes within a family. So first thing, just to kind of be aware of that and just to be present with that and to know that. Um, so even, you know, young parents, uh, there could be a lot of anxiety. It's a like oh, a lot of things happening in life from careers and money, you know, challenges. And, and oh, I mean, like just, I'm thinking of my own challenges of like figuring workout and career and, um, you know, now raising a child and like, yeah, there's just a lot of things going on. Um, and so it's really easy to have, uh, you know, anxieties. And so first thing as parents, especially is you want to focus on like up leveling your base of well-being in the family and your degree of function for yourself and your partner so that that function rises. Um, and so that there's a greater capacity for, change within the home because if you have kind of like a narrow capacity for your well-being well it doesn't take much we know that when we feel like kind of down and out it doesn't take much of a fluctuation to throw us off so what we're saying is in a family the more room that they have 
uh, to function within a changing environment, uh, the healthier that they are. And so they kind of hold the space for this whole family dynamic to operate in. And the less well-being the parents have, it just shrinks the, it kind of shrinks the, the room in there. And so the family becomes more volatile and it looks more dysfunctional because there's just they have to like everything has to be tight and controlled and regulated uh, versus having an opportunity to have more change in the family home so as our baseline grows also our room of what makes us anxious also grows too and we just have more room uh, more room to breathe you can kind of think of it that way um, so so this is a, a situation so when I was talking just to bring it back around when I was talking with the mom I said here listen do this I need you to sit down with your husband. I need you guys to make a list. Make a list of everything that's unresolved, that's creating anxiety in the home, and you guys need to begin to open up that line of communication. Start rifling through that and open that up. Because if that doesn't open and you guys don't feel more at ease with what's happening in your environment, um, you're gonna what you're gonna do is that unresolved anxiety between the two of you is gonna go shoot down right to her and even the work that I do here isn't going to be as monumental of a change because she's basically being thrown back into a home that's highly anxious. And so the changes that we can create together for this young child is just going to be minimized because really the, in the, the environment that she's bathing in is really what's most important. So, um, so I instructed them to sit down and just sort through everything that's unresolved, all the anxieties that are happening, and begin the process and, and begin the process of creating more ease within themselves so that they can just give the whole family and the house more room to breathe. Um, and that'll be like, you know, enough for the child to begin to change symptomatology if they're taking responsibility for their part in the anxiety symptom dynamic. Um, parents need to be, the kids really have a pretty tough time at a very young age taking any type of responsibility. I don't really think that they're of age to take responsibility yet. So it really, the responsibility deflects to um, the, you know, the parents to kind of get themselves organized, minimize the anxieties, get things more functional and more at ease, and the child in this triad will follow and symptoms can resolve and things can change. So um, I want to kind of give you that kind of case example of the suggestions I made to the parents, making sure that they're constantly working on resolving their anxieties. We'll take care of the kid, but at the same time, they're taking care of their child as well because they're managing their own anxieties and their own fears and concerns and worries and, and issues between each other. So um, I wanted to mention that of how this little simple dynamic works. Dr. Bowen really lined that, this up really easily for us. And just knowing that unresolved issues in mom, unresolved issues in dad, if they're getting heightened enough, boom, they'll project to the child and the child, if taking the heat long enough will produce symptoms, tension, uh, dis-ease, even Ill illness, um, as all those things are generally a means to reconnect the family and up-level the energy. So um, the child serves a purpose to help people to get more authentic again, more real, bust through the limitations and stress, and uh, so our child is, is, uh, is, our, is our gift. Uh, their symptoms are our gift to have us reflect and up-level our own energy and our own organization within our home and our own well-being. So um, not only should the child be getting well, but the parents should equally uh, have the focus to getting well as well. So um, hopefully this little diagram was helpful and maybe a little tidbit in there. Uh, let me know any comments or questions that you have below. I'd love to answer them. And uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video. Hey guys, Dr. Steve here. If you hate this channel, leave a nasty comment below and don't subscribe. But if you do like this content, I'd love for you to be able to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave a wonderful, inspiring comment below as to what you're learning. So we'll talk to you soon.